Well, welcome everyone to our community call um, while Adi reconnects. Uh, what we'll do is go through at a high level a couple of things we wanted to chat about today. The main things we wanted to go through were a bunch of updates in terms of our, our Q3 2023 priorities. We wanted to talk a little bit about those two major priorities and uh, we had some questions for the community either for folks here on the call today or for you know folks listening to the recording of this I'm quite interested in knowing uh, a few things about how you how you actually use your storage and um, I wanted to find out if anybody on the call today had any other topics they wanted to bring up Are there any uh, I don't know one is anything that you wanted to bring up is it Tuan Saifu Any questions or anything? Let us know if if there is anything that comes up as as we're going through the the call today. Otherwise, we might end up making it a relatively short call. Um, Ali, you had a couple of things you wanted to talk through. Was it just uh, the Q three priorities and um, then some of the questions from the team? I think we lost Ali again. Oh, well. let's get started with some of our Q3 priorities. So you'll see the link in the community call doc, and I'll share it over here in the chat again for, for folks. Um, this is what we're currently looking at doing in Q3. There's a lot of fine grain detail on this project board view and the two major priorities that we're focusing on at the moment still in terms of new work that we're doing. This is beyond bug fixes and potential security fixes and so on, um, is we're still looking into ways of optimizing Comet's bandwidth consumption and its storage usage. And from the bandwidth consumption perspective, um, I, I suspect that we've actually already, um, we've already managed to capitalize on all the sort of low-hanging fruit that we we can actually get without making substantial protocol breaking changes. There are some updates that have already landed in releases that users have, have access to, but then there are some changes that have been made, like some of the changes that Ethan made, for example, where those are only going to be rolled out in Comet 039. Um, and we should, we should see some meaningful bandwidth uh, consumption reductions over there. We can talk a little bit about that if folks want to. But I, I suspect that all future uh, bandwidth optimizations will probably come from more fundamental uh, changes to the gossip protocol and or the consensus vote. So that's uh, the transaction gossip protocol and or the consensus vote gossip protocol. Um, so a lot of the, our efforts in Q3 are geared towards trying to figure out what of these different approaches will work best. And then maybe there are things that we can still implement in Q3 in order to actually capitalize on that. And then in terms of the storage optimization work for Q3, there's there are a whole bunch of things that we're looking at where we're trying to figure out, um, I suppose one of the main things we're trying to see is, can we give operators more control over their storage usage? And uh, we have some ideas as to how to do that. And again, we can, we've kind of talked through some of them in previous calls like the ADR 101 implementation, there are a bunch of other sort of low-hanging fruits that we want to we want to try and um, deliver for users, but the, the, there's still going to be a substantial effort in Q3 in order to try to understand users' storage usage. Part of our issue is there is that many application and consensus level concerns are kind of mixed in together in Comet, sort of architecturally. And we're doing what we can to consider this to be technical debt. We're doing what we can to kind of separate this stuff out over time and push the application level concerns back to the application. But those will be substantial breaking changes we'll have to make over the next year, maybe two years. It's not stuff that we're going to be able to do very quickly. Um, but we have some ideas as to how to progressively roll this out in as least uh, disruptive way as possible for users. I don't know if there's any questions for anybody about the Q3 priorities. I just know 
questions about the key three priorities, maybe we can go through each of the two high level priorities. Um, these are some of the questions that I said that our team has for the community. And again, for folks currently listening to the call or folks uh, listening to the recording of this call, we'll be very interested in knowing um, and getting some feedback from, from you all on these various different questions. So I don't know if, uh, Lazaro, you want to go through some of your questions first? Sure. Um, okay, so this may actually make more sense for uh, validators, but um, since some of you may also be validators, um, maybe you can ask them here as well. In order to quantify the gains or what we have to, to gain in terms of bandwidth um, usage to enable some use cases and how we can quantify the actual gain at the end of the quarter, we want to get some metrics from some data from the validators. So the question here is, would you be willing to share that information with us? So that some of that may be considered um, sensitive and answer the questions. For example, are you using sentry nodes? We know that some validators are not. And then are you using tender seed to start up your networks? Anything similar like that, or fork of tender seed, right? Um, and these are uh, simple yes or no questions, right? Uh, we do not really been, um, getting want to get the map of your network, but some of the other things are more detailed information. Um, for example, we want to get some real metrics, uh, the metrics that the, our system is dumping into Prometheus, and if we could get those metrics directly in, into a zip file, that would be great. Otherwise, would you be willing to let us access some Grafana a dashboard with some of those metrics so that you could have better control of what we actually looking at? Um, we, 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 uh, we're going to, to reach out to, to validators to make those questions directly, but if you have any input, yeah, that would be greatly appreciated. Awesome. So, I mean, if any, I don't know if anybody on the call over here has any feedback for that or on that. Otherwise, uh, maybe we can go through some of the storage optimization related questions. Um, yeah. Also, very quick thing. Um, so, sure. we will also like post these this questions on our like um, shared common paper channel and like reach out to welders also as well. So in case if you um, do miss this call and you're watching it later, um, we, we can also like, uh, you can also like reach out to us personally. Awesome. Yeah, I think the, the main point is that we have the questions out there and then people can also, I mean, some of those might not be even answerable immediately uh, on the spot, so that's okay. I think the main reason we want to have answers to these questions is because we will be doing some optimizations and we want to prioritize those that could impact people the most or those that we see make most of sense depending on how people use their data and stuff like that. And we would like to know like, what are your pain points um, that can be tied to storage? We already have reports that storage takes a lot of space. It's a lot of money that operators pay uh, to store comet data. Uh, nodes sometimes crash because the, you know, the, the responses to queries are heavy. So we want to know your use cases, which really um, you know, make, make your life harder because the storage uh, endpoint might be improved, right? Um, so uh, we also want to understand whether you what RPC endpoints you use, um, what is the data that you're interested in retrieving via these RPC endpoints, because maybe some of those can be optimized, the data layout can be optimized, and the, but we can't optimize without knowing what it's being used for, right? Then in terms of the data that you're storing, how big are your blocks? Um, do you reconfigure Comet in particular to store a bigger block parts than they're already by default configured and stuff like that? So do you have any custom configuration that is storage related? And what is your in, in your particular use case? Like what is the size of the data that you're storing? Do you use our indexer or you turn it off because it's inefficient for you and you anyways use our, you know, use the block results uh, to query data and, and how, how do you interact with that? Um, also, we have uh, reports for some users that pruning wasn't working perfectly for them. So do you prune data? Why are you pruning it? Because you're expecting it to save on your storage or you have other reasons for pruning data and does it really work very well for you, for example. And another thing that we have, uh, we have a currently ongoing uh, also PR from somebody external, but we're also looking into that the Genesis files can uh, be large and we want to understand um, 
um, when you retrieve Genesis files via RPC, are you really doing that via RPC? How often that is? Why are you doing this? What is your use case? Do you really need the file all, all the time or you need some information within that file? Because we are rethinking about how this file is stored and um, having some extra info on how it's being used is going to be really, really helpful. So, and we might come with some extra questions down the road, but those were the main ones that kind of appeared so far. And, you know, we, we can always respond to this offline in Slack or, or here or, or, you know, DM us, but it's something that we would really be interested in gathering um, as soon as you can provide us this information because that kind of can kickstart um, our work also somewhat, sometime this quarter. And um, yeah, that's, I think that's it. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Yasmina. Thanks, Lazaro. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if there's anything else anybody wanted to chat about today. Um, does anybody have anything in particular they want to talk about? Otherwise, we'll probably call it early. Um, so, I'm just curious about the... So, I, I noticed that question about do you use indexing? Mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious about what's the future of um, the indexing story on the Comet VFT side, um, and which what are like the in... I guess common setups on that end. So, so which which aspect of the indexing are you thinking about? Are you thinking about um, event data indexing? You're thinking of transaction indexing, or you know, what what facet of the indexing yeah. is most important to you? Uh, even indexing uh, yeah. in that context. That is one of the things that is an app, is actually an application level concern that's kind of mixed in with the consensus engine. We were trying right. to figure out a long-term path to um, separating that out from the consensus engine in some way. And uh, in the short term, we're looking, at least in Q3, we're, we're looking at um, coming up with an implementation of ADR 101. So if I could drop a, a link over here in the chat. Um, and the idea there is to provide some kind of API that will facilitate not only um, but like a sidecar service, basically being able to pull block data and block results data from the node. Mm -hmm. Technically, that is possible already via the JSON RPC API. But what's not possible via the JSON RPC API right now, what we'd like to enable via a gRPC API in future, is a mechanism by which the sidecar can actually have some influence over the pruning of the data on the node. That includes pruning of block data and block results data. And so there's a, a more detailed and comprehensive write-up. Uh, let me try and share the, the link over here. If you'd like to, I don't know if everyone, if you've taken a look at um, the Data Companion API ADR yet. I'm looking for it. Almost there. Oh, it's this one. So it's 82. Oh, I'm six, trying to find you. the pull request. Yeah. So you can take a look at the, the mm -hmm. rendered version of the document here. The um, It describes more or less what the interface looks like. We've been talking about this and thinking about this for a couple of months now. It seems like the best, let's say, like short to medium term strategy for offloading this data to an external companion service, so kind of sidecar, where the sidecar can actually choose what data it actually wants to index and then to index it in the way that it needs it to be indexed. Because the way in which you index this data is very application specific. Right? Yeah. And so, you know, we don't want to make opinionated decisions from the comic perspective as to how your data should be indexed because most of the time it'll be suboptimal if we try to cater for everyone we'll end up catering for no one so we'd rather give you like a sane api and a simple api through which you can actually pull that data and influence what data is pruned from the comic node as well once your companion actually has the data it needs to then index it in whatever way you see fit uh, to index it so, so let me just complement here. So the, sure. the key point from what, what Thane is explaining is that as it is today, you can still pull the data using our RPC and do you know what Thane is explaining, you can, you know, you, you would be able to do. But there is a problem. You can't control the pruning. So that means that if you are slow or you you know your service falls down or something, you might be, you know, late. And so yeah. the, the node internally has pruned the data. And so you lost the data. That is bad. That is that is not really a, a good design. The ADR 101 that Thane is, is, is showing 
is basically a solution for that. Gotcha. And then to add to that as well, like remember, so the node currently has a pruning mechanism that's influenced by the application's retain height that returns in the commit response, the ABCI commit response. And what ends up happening there is it only prunes blocks. So right now there's no pruning mechanism for block results. And what this ADR introduces is a mechanism by which the sidecar, um, it's supposed to be a trusted process that runs separately to the comic process. Um, the sidecar process can actually influence the pruning heights of both the block data and the block results data separately, depending on its needs. Again, that's an application specific thing I imagine. And what we see in the long run is this paves the way to like once, once we have a bunch of these data compa companions available, but I mean, one of the examples that we were thinking of is um, having an RPC companion. And Andy did a presentation on this on one of the, one of the previous community calls because uh, he was working on uh, a proof of concept of this. Is that you could actually, you could implement some kind of ingest service as the data companion that stores the data in some relevant database that you can then scale out horizontally attached to uh, uh, an RPC server. So you can actually scale your RPC independently of your full node, for example. And then you don't need to store the data twice. So in the current, so you can technically build the scalable RPC service right now. Um, yeah. Nothing stops you from doing that, but then you still don't have, you'll effectively be storing that data at least twice, once in the Comet node and then once for the, 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 the standalone RPC server. So we want to be able to reduce people's costs. So at least give operators greater control over their costs over time, depending depending on their setup, whatever it is that they're they're building, uh, whatever it is they've they've attached to their full nodes. Um, we want to give them greater control over the their storage usage. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks. And um, I guess question comes to mind is what is the depth tree for that ADR? I guess like the obviously like gRPC support, but is there other stuff that um, needs before it's rolled out? So I mean we're we're looking at that doing that this quarter. The um, we first have to just implement the pruning mechanism. And there's a bunch of uh, RPC endpoints that we have to implement. Um, so gRPC endpoints. We're looking at providing a full gRPC API in the 039 release of Comet. We're looking at backporting some of that back to the 037 release. Um, as to, there's still a bit of debate about whether to just introduce a JSON RPC endpoint into the 037 and 038 release series, and then implement the full gRPC API from 039 onwards. Or, you know, the other alternative is to backport the gRPC API all the way back to 037. There's, again, some debate about whether we should do it for 034 as well, given that everything we backport to 034 at this point introduces new technical risk into the project, mm -hmm. especially into a release that's been, you know, used in production for several years now across many different networks. So we want to try and minimize the, the risk that we introduce into older releases, but if there is a, a strong enough demand for this to be backported to 034, then perhaps we'll consider doing that. But for now, we're, we're mainly targeting 037 with the uh, backporting effort. Cool. Thank yeah, you. One, one last okay. point, one yeah. last point re regarding this that, that, that drove us to initially go in this direction is that we've been having reports of the fact that the current indexing logic is ad hoc like it's just some, it's just some ad hoc thing with a, a querying language that was just like, you know, that, that is just there and it's uh, sometimes inefficient. So there's, there has been report that this is a, has been a bottleneck. And so some people just disable it because they don't, you know, they, they want their node to be like, you know, more performant. And again, like, you know, querying, uh, storing things, indexing things, this is not something a consensus engine should, should do. So that was also this, like, you know, the fact that the current logic, the current code we have, is probably not the best answer to kind of a standard question, which is in indexing data. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. 
I suspect that this, this represents also a bit of a philosophical shift from the older thinking around Tenement Core. In the Tenement Core, when it was initially designed and built, it was built to be very much self-contained and to be run as like a single standalone binary. And again, it's to be, to, to be as self-contained as possible. But we're seeing now that we're kind of in production, in production networks at least, we're hitting a variety of different practical limits um, of that model. And so it seems like it makes a lot of sense to start progressively splitting out bits of functionality into separate processes. Like for example, running a scalable RPC service, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to run three full nodes or multiple full nodes to be able to provide that for your users. It ends up being quite expensive. Um, so we want to provide some, some sane path towards uh, being able to do that. And we would, as a, we, we can't, do big bang refactors and just remove entire APIs without breaking an entire ecosystem. So again, something we're gonna to have to do progressively over a number of major breaking releases. Great, Love thanks it. for the comprehensive answer. Love it. Cool. I appreciate it. For once we have the time, so. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Is there any other questions on that front or on the bandwidth optimization efforts or anything like that? Well, if there aren't any other questions, then uh, we'll probably uh, call the... Can call, call the early. party early, yeah. Yeah. Short call today. All right. Excellent. Well, thanks very much, everyone, for, for joining. Um, good to see everyone again and see you all in two weeks' time again. Cheers. Bye. Have a good rest of your day.